Hey everybody, I have a hunk of cherry here that was the core out of uh, a bigger bowl that I did a little while ago. So I'm going to finish turn this and we're going to do some coloring. Uh, Emma Cook is also known as the Tiny Turner. She's in the UK and this is something that I've seen her do and it's really quite fantastic. Because this is a core, it's you know, it's already shaped like a bowl. And my initial intent was to round over the top quite a bit and make it more of a calabash style bowl, which is going to show off the banding work that we're going to do a lot better. But I decided that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to waste that much of the material off of it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a channel in the side of it and go ahead with the texturing and the color work. Now, I definitely wish that I had used either a different piece of wood or just sucked it up and, you know, lost a, a considerable amount of the diameter because while the finished product looks good, you really can't see it unless the bowl is sitting, you know, above eye level. So, um, if you're going to, if you're going to try this, I definitely recommend using a bowl that is got, um, a, you know, a nice flat side, like a calabash style bowl, or you could do it on, you know, a vase or some other sort of a spindly turning where you have a nice solid side that is relatively, you know, perpendicular. I'm using a thin parting tool to kind of mark out where this channel is going to be and then a 3 8 inch parting and beading tool to cut a little bit of a channel into it. You don't have to do this. You could just, you know, do the carving at the same depth, but I thought that this would make it stand out a little bit better and give it a little bit more delineation. All right. I've got the lathe running at just under 1200 revs and that's a, that's a little fast for me although this is a relatively small bowl and it's dry and, and balanced so it's definitely safe and I'm using a shear scrape to just get the best surface that I can on either side of this band before I carry on with the rest of the process. Now we're going to sand and we'll start working on the color. We're sanded up to 320 and um, I'm going to denatured alcohol on here. And a one pound cut of shellac. Kind of seal things up a little bit. I sanded the textured area just a little bit, mostly just to make sure it's smooth. Um, you know, and isn't going to catch on things when uh, when I'm putting the paint on or afterwards. And let that dry a minute. All right, this is black gesso. 
which is a kind of a primer. And the reason that I'm using black is because that's what Emma uses with hers. Now she's using her, um, she just started a product line of chameleon powders and flakes. So they, they're really color shifty for making, you know, like dragon eggs and things like that. So anyway, I'm using this because that's what she uses is black gesso. And I believe that she said that's because it helps give a good base for the powders to reflect off of. I'm not exactly sure if that's what she said or not, but that's what I'm going with for right now. Cause I don't remember. I'm just doing it cause this is what she did. And Lori has black gesso. So I went and stole it from her. Well, I didn't steal it from her. She gave it to me to use, but you know, this isn't something that I have. I imagine you could probably use black paint or something too. Um, but the gesso is, you know, like a primer. So it, it gives a little tooth for things to stick to. Okay. We're going to let that dry. I wonder what will happen if we go with some actual copper powder. And then a little interference green. We're going to try it and see what happens. Because I am doing my best to refrain from making everything blue, which is what I usually do. Because plain old blue for Lisa. Okay, I'm going to use uh, Mod Podge, which is a matte finish water-based glue and sealer to make the mica powder stick to it. So what I'm going to do first is just put this on because then I think I need to let it dry a little so it's still tacky but not like wet wet. Emma used um, metallic leaf size and I don't have any of that so it seems like it's drying faster than it did when I tried this yesterday so I mean, ultimately, I think that's good because I need it to be mostly dry. All the brushes that I'm using are like super cheap and that's okay. I think for what we're doing right now. Um, all right. That's looking like it's mostly oh, uh, transparent now. So I'm going to, ah, oh, snap. Even after watching the music video by my friend the Craftsman reminded me, don't forget to wear your dust mask. I forgot to wear my dust mask. I might have to go and get me a sticker now. Get a scooper. Get just a little bit of copper powder. I'm going to put the lid back on because you know I'm going to spill that all over everything. Okay. You just stay there. For real, I definitely should have been wearing a respirator. Anytime you're working with mica powder and stuff like that, that floofs up in the air and it's real small particulates, wearing a respirator or at the very least a good dust mask that will filter out the small particulates like you would use for sanding. You see, it does not take much mica powder. Um, I'm not sure. If I'm going to be able to get this on there without pulling 
Yeah, I'm definitely pulling some of this out, but that's, I think that's just how it's going to be. All right, let's try some. I'm mixing a little bit of the Jacquard Perlex Interference Green in with the copper powder, hoping I can get a little bit of a color shift. Uh, I'm going to let that sit for a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and we will go on from here. I think I'm going to make a couple of crisp lines here because I might put uh, some thin copper wire in the edges. I'm not sure yet. Either way, I don't think that this is going to hurt me as far as, you know, what I'm trying to do. This is a point tool that I made from a screwdriver, so it's just got uh, basically a triangular pointed head. I think it's used more for threading, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to. And this is the Axe by Carter. It's a diamond point carbide tool, and I love it. I got it at AZ Carbide, and it's one of my favorite tools for all kinds of important things. Right. Gloss. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the varnish on the copper part. I'm going to let that dry. Alright, looks like I'm back around to where I started. I'm just going to go around and kind of try to smooth out any place where it might be kind of lumpy because it seems like this dries it's not really like self-leveling so if it's lumpy i think it's gonna dry lumpy which is okay you know this is textured and it's not supposed to be like crazy smooth but Still something that's good to know ahead of time, so you don't get surprised. All right, I'm going to let that dry. I re-alcoholed uh, and shellacked the outside here where I sanded it. And so now we're going to do Brad's sanding paste. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put the tongue honey on. Okay, so that needs to sit with that soak in for a while. Um, I'll show you guys something. I, had, I did this, I guess, a couple years ago now. So I did a custom mantle for a couple, and I took off their existing mantle. And this is what it looked like. Oops. Um, I have no idea what kind of wood this is. I'm thinking maybe some kind of redwood or something. Um, you know, the front of it was kind of was kind of carved and textured and whatnot, but uh, this was just a chunk of it. So a while ago, I made this thing, which was really supposed to be more of like a hurricane glass kind of a thing, but it was really a um, practice piece, a prototype something or other for making a. Uh, thing with a copper band on it. 
So what I did on this piece is I basically cut this off here in the center and then um, I etched, I drew the designs on the copper piece, etched it with ferric chloride and then put patina on it and then sanded most of the patina back off so the high spots are, are shiny. And then I did a really lousy solder job because it was just about impossible to I couldn't get anything to hold on to it without soldering it together and anyway so I need to find a better way to to do the band because I think that that this is something I really wanted to do and this just didn't work out quite how I was hoping but um, you can see that I like my I like my copper bands um, and so this is gonna be you know a little bit reminiscent of that so anybody any idea what kind of wood this is the you know, the dust is the same color as this. It's got super tight. It's pretty light. It didn't really smell like a whole lot when I was turning it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe some kind of redwood or I don't think that it's, I don't think it's mahogany. I think that the grain is a little bit I don't know. I don't know what it is. Any ideas? Super tight grain. But obviously it has all of these funky rotten spots in it. But I saved it because that's what we do, right? We, we save every little tiny... Well, this wasn't tiny, but uh, we save every piece of wood because it might be useful for something, right? Yeah, I know I'm not the only one who does that. So in the meantime, I asked the girls what they thought about um, doing for the edge here. And the options were the copper, burning it so it's just black, or either of these two colors. And they both said this color. So... Since the green didn't really show up anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see about putting that down in that channel. Not exactly sure how I'm going to make it stick in there, but um, if I struggle with that worst case scenario, I will just burn those with a piece of formica to you know darken it and, and just add a little bit of delineation. Um, I'm just not so sure how I'm going to get those to stay down in there. So I'll think about that while the tongue honey is soaking in. And we'll come back after a while and see if there's any dry spots or areas where it looks like it's soaked in and needs a little bit more. So the band where the color is has black gesso and then Mod Podge for the adhesive for the mica powder and the copper powder, and then the Liquitex gloss varnish. I did go ahead and put the Brad's Tongue Honey on the copper band, and I'm buffing it off, and the, the varnish did seal everything in there, so I'm not taking off any of that finish, which I was pleasantly surprised about. Since the varnish did actually seal that, the tongue oil in the tongue honey isn't going to soak into that copper band, but that doesn't really matter because I am going to get the benefit of the waxes on top, which are going to buff and give a nice finish like the rest of the bowl. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Yes. Okay. So, let's see. For my next trick. For my next trick, I should have just called it done. Um, spoiler alert, I was able to get the copper wire in, and you'll see it at the end, but I don't, I don't like it as much as I thought that I would. I mean, it's okay. I don't, I don't really dislike it, but I did get CA glue on the finished bowl, which I knew that I was going to. Um, I just didn't find a good way to secure it down into the channel. You know, I, I drilled a little hole and I put a 90 degree bend on the wire 
and then I put some CA glue down in there and then just went a little bit at a time. I'm using Starbond medium CA glue and a bamboo skewer to apply just a little bit into that channel and then try and adhere the wire down in there without gluing myself to the bowl or anything else. It was, um, it was interesting. It was a little frustrating. It's still not completely stuck in all of the places. I finally decided that maybe I would use a little piece of wood so that if it did get stuck to something, it wouldn't be my finger. In any case, I did manage to make it work. Uh, if I had a better adhesive option, um, it might be, it, it might be all right. Um, next time I will probably just either leave it or burn a dark line with a formica or a piece of wire and call it good. I think the bands that Emma uses on her banded bowls are leather or cord and that would have been fine with the Starbond CA glue. It just didn't really want to stick all that well to this craft wire. I was trying not to use too much so that I wouldn't get squeeze out and I think that it just was really not the right product for this particular application and material. All right, let's see. Yeah, I got some glue squeeze out and have to figure out what I want to do about that, but I took this picture of the bowl sitting up on top of the china cabinet and it looks fine from there. It looks nice. But if it's sitting on a table, like here it is on the dining room table, you can't see the banding at all. Whereas with the sycamore one that I did, because it's more of a calabash style, you can see the banding. And this turned out really nice. I'm, I'm quite pleased with this one. I used a couple of different colors of mica powder to give it a little bit of a shift. And um, I'll definitely be making some more of those. Some of you may have seen that I had a big birthday a couple of weeks ago. And for my 50th birthday, I bought myself a 21-year-old ATV. Her name is Tawanda. I'm going to call her Wanda for short, and we're going to go on many wood gathering adventures. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Also, on my birthday, we had birthday pancakes, and Bailey was very, very excited that somebody saved him a bite of a birthday pancake. He's a very gentle boy, and he eats so nicely off a fork. Birthday pancakes. <clears throat> you made me snort. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, y'all be safe out there.